Hello, and happy Easter. I'm Dennis Calhoun, the senior minister at the Old North Church in Marblehead, Massachusetts. We're an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ, and no matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you're welcome here. We're delighted that you're worshiping with us on this day of resurrection. Now, ordinarily, Easter Sunday at Old North Church begins with a pre-dawn sunrise service in Old Burial Hill. For obvious reasons, this year we could not gather there, but we will be called to worship from there. So I invite you to take a deep breath and open your hearts and minds to the spirit of the living God in whom we live and move and have our being. Darkness over the earth before creation. Darkness in the womb before birth. Darkness in tomb before resurrection. But darkness cannot endure the light. The dawn has come. New creation has begun. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Let, Let us worship, worship the, the risen Christ. Christ.
please, will you join your hearts with mine in our prayers of invocation and confession? God of resurrection, we cry out to you from a spent world where we know the good Friday of innocent suffering and death, of smoldering light, of dreams dissolved. We stumble amongst the tombs in our lives and long to find them empty. God of resurrection, we long to sense your presence and feel the pulse of your power. Bring Easter to our hearts and to our lives and to our world, for Christ is now arisen, planting life and love in the weary soil of our lives, bringing day to the withering soul, restoring hope to the lost. It is in the name and in the presence of the risen Christ that we now pray. Amen. And now in the full light of that risen Christ, let us confess our sins against God, against our neighbors, and against our own selves. Let us pray. Come to us, God, like fresh water, softening the soil of a parched and weary land. We confess that hurts and disappointments harden our hearts. Frustrations and failures dry us out. We confess that we have lost patience with ourselves and those we love. We confess our failures to be gentle as we move through these days. Hear us in the silence as we call to mind all that separates us from your love. Come to us, God, with life-giving power. Free us from resentment, reluctance, and reserve. Remind us that in your forgiveness we are free. Forgiven may we be forgiving. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Beloved ones, Jesus said to the disciples, Take heart. Have no fear. As disciples, we no longer need to be burdened by guilt, no longer need to be bound by fear. Be renewed through God's forgiving love. Be open to Christ's presence in your life, here and now. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good morning, my name is Karen Kilty, and it is great pleasure to say Happy Easter to all of you. I'm the Director of Children's Ministries here at Old North Church, and it's this time during our service that we invite our children to come forward. Easter is usually a day that we gather in our church all dressed up in our spring best, sitting together in the sanctuary, listening to Maria and the choir and the musicians sing and play the beautiful music of joy that this day brings. Baskets are filled with chocolate bunnies and jelly beans, the Easter bunnies delivered. Easter egg hunts, and oh, that feast. All those yummy foods that we love best, and sitting with those that we love best around our tables. This year is very different. We have not gathered in our church. You may or may not be wearing your very best Easter clothes, and some of you may even be in your pajamas. There may not be an abundance of candy for the Easter bunny knows that keeping distance is important this year and he may not have made it to everyone's house. There are no plans for gathering with extended family, but my hope for you this Easter day is that you find a simple way, a way to celebrate Easter that is filled with joy and stories of Easter memories and remembering God's promise, safe in your own homes. Although this Easter is in a new way, being together like this allows us to hear the familiar sounds of Easter, hearing the organ, the choir, the music that brings us joy, the words of good news of Jesus has risen. 
words we have heard through this, these stories before. So on this Easter day, children, let us renew this feeling this of the old, old story and offer praise and abundant alleluias. Let us pray together. Dear God, thank you for rolling away the stone and raising Jesus from the dead. Thank you for the new way of life you give us this day and always. Amen. Good morning and happy Easter. Our first reading is from the 31st chapter of Jeremiah, verses 1 through 6. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus, says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. When Israel sought for rest, the Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love, therefore I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you, and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again, you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria, and planters shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when sentinels will call in the hill country of Ephraim. Come, let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. We have heard these words from Scripture. Let us find in them the word of God. People of God, this is unlike any Easter I've ever experienced. I so wish I was there with you. I so wish we were together up at Old Burial Hill at sunrise. I so wish there were trumpets and fancy hats and whole crowds of noisy children running around wearing tiny suits and bow ties. Instead, we're in our homes. Some of us are all alone. Some of us are with increasingly restless children and teenagers, or are caring for our sick parents or spouses, or are learning new rhythms for when everyone is home all the time. It does not feel much like Easter to me, but it is still Easter, here, now, today, right where I am, right where you are, right here, in this aching, infected world. The prophet Jeremiah gave us a word of hope today. God says again, I will build you and you will be rebuilt. Again, you shall take tambourines and dance with joy. Again, you shall plant vineyards and enjoy their fruit. Jeremiah, of course, wasn't writing in the midst of a global pandemic, but he was writing in the midst of an exile. The holy city of Jerusalem had been ransacked and almost all of its people sent away into captivity in Babylon. Jeremiah had stayed with the ones left behind to help them try to rebuild their lives. Their temple had been destroyed so they could not worship God. Their homes had been burnt down so they could not go home. Their farms and vineyards had been trampled so they could not grow their food. It was without a doubt, the worst time they had ever lived through. Without a doubt, 
It felt like the world was ending. And yet, the world did not end. 3,000 years later, here we are, reading the prophet's words. We are not in exile, but it sure does feel like the world is ending, doesn't it? And beloved, the world as we knew it is gone. Just like we will never go back to how things were before 9-11, we will never go back to how things were before coronavirus. This is a hard and a terrible truth. It deserves to be grieved. It is a real loss that contains within it a thousand, thousand other losses. And yet, it is Easter today. And so I tell you, we are going to live past the end of the world as we knew it. We are. We are going to live into a new world. Like Jeremiah, we are going to offer despairing people hope for a new future. We are going to stick around through what feels like the end of the world and help one another rebuild. We are not going to go back to normal. Instead, we are going to live into a future where we are more tender and careful with each other, a future where we recognize that the least of these are actually the most essential. We will live together into a future where we actually treat the essential ones as though they are essential, giving them what they need to thrive. Right now, today, we are living into a future where we learn how to connect with one another even when we're so far apart. We are living into a future where we realize in our bones our utter dependence on one another. Like the prophet Jeremiah said, we are finding grace in the wilderness. Here, now. God is walking alongside us. Again, God will build us and we will be rebuilt. Again, we will go into our sanctuaries and our offices. Again, we will gather at one another's tables. Beloved, we are longing for and working for and praying for we are building and hoping for God's kingdom to come here on earth as it is in heaven. On this strange Easter morning, let's let the words to that familiar prayer wash over us now as Fred Crable sings to us the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.
Good morning. The scripture reading this morning is from the book of Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. Jesus is risen. Now after the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look at the grave. And behold, a severe earthquake had occurred, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone and sat upon it. And his appearance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. The guard shook for fear of him and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who has been crucified. He is not here, for he has risen just as he said. Come, see the place where he was lying. Go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and behold, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, and behold, I have told you. And they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy, and ran to report it to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and greeted them, and they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and take word to my brethren to leave for Galilee, and there they will see me. We have heard these words from Scripture. Let us find within them the Word of God. Shall we pray? Holy One, on this day when we are reminded that life triumphs over death, open our hearts and minds to hear your good news and make it our own. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. Matthew's Gospel tells us that's what the angel, that lightning-like figure from heaven, said when the women arrived at that garden tomb. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. I suspect that all of us are looking for Jesus, or at least something to celebrate on this most unusual Easter Sunday in the year of the novel coronavirus. We would love to be together, filling our sanctuary on Washington Street, singing beloved hymns, hugging friends and family, gathering around festive tables, spreading the joy we typically associate with this holiest of days. But here we are in the midst of this pandemic, separated by a safe distance, most of us feeling something I imagine to be quite like the fear and confusion that must have filled the hearts and minds of those first followers and friends of Jesus. Now, typically, Jesus makes quite a splash in the media during Holy Week. His face on magazine covers, his life story, the subject of movie reruns, or a documentary on the newest scholarship on what we know about Jesus and what is left to faith. This year, the media has other things to report, whether or not the curve is flattening, what's happening to the latest infection hotspots, where to find those hard-to-find essentials, and, of course, the grim news about confirmed cases and death. In the midst of all this, Jesus didn't get many headlines this week. Even so, the story we Easter people are here to tell is the story of that empty tomb and the two women who discovered it. Matthew tells us that when Mary Magdalene and another woman named Mary arrived at the garden tomb, they encountered a figure that appeared like lightning and said to them, I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. The women had come looking for Jesus in the one place they were sure he would be, 
in his tomb. Because whatever surprises he had managed during his short life among them, whatever charisma he had, whatever power he possessed, all of that was just a memory now. Their beloved Jesus had met his death. That much the women could be sure of because they had witnessed it. But they couldn't let go just yet. They came looking for Jesus in the one place they were sure he would be, the tomb. They came there in their grief because people are often drawn to the graves of those they've loved. But oh, what a surprise was in store for them. Matthew's Gospel tells us that as the women arrived at the place where they came in their grief, the ground trembled, lightning flashed, and the figure of a man appeared in dazzling white. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He's not here, for he has been raised. He has been raised. What an astonishing story we Christians tell at Easter. People are still looking for Jesus. And in ordinary times, lots of people come to church, especially on Easter, hoping to find him there. But these are not ordinary times, and this is no ordinary Easter. So where is Jesus? Where can we find the one we still seek? Where is Jesus? Well, right where he always is at the intersection of anywhere and everywhere. The sanctuary of Old North Church on Washington Street in Marblehead is just one of the places where Jesus has been known to show up. But it's just as likely that Jesus will show up elsewhere, namely, wherever you are. That lightning-like figure said to the two women in our story, I know that you're looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He's not here, for he has been raised. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. Galilee. Where is this Galilee? For Jesus and his disciples, Galilee was the name of a place, a location, the familiar landscape of their ordinary lives the hills and valleys and villages where they lived and worked when Jesus first appeared and called them to come and follow him. Galilee was the place they knew best. Galilee is the place we know best. The places where we live and work and gather with family and friends in ordinary times. The world of our everyday routines, our daily lives, our habits, our comfort zones. Galilee is where our lives seemed normal. Galilee. That's where you will find me, Jesus told the women to tell his other friends. This Easter, our lives have been disrupted in ways we could have scarcely imagined last Easter. Life these days is anything but normal, whatever that means. And here we are, many of us frightened, worried, uncertain about the future, much like those first followers of Jesus. I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he's been raised, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. Things will get back to normal although none of us know when. But we are on our way. Galilee may still lie over the horizon, but we're on the road, and we will get there. Meanwhile, we needn't wait to get to Galilee to encounter the risen Christ. He's on the way with us, his death-defying spirit alive and well and filling the hearts and minds of his friends and followers. I know that you are seeking Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, and indeed he is going ahead of you 
to the intersection of anywhere and everywhere you were going. Watch for him. Listen for him. Follow him. For he is traveling with you. Friends, this is the gospel of Christ. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Thanks be to God. Shall we pray? We gather, O oh God, from our scattered homes to rejoice in the light of the empty tomb. The stone has been rolled away, both from the mouth of the grave and from the depths of our hearts. We have come here in these difficult days to celebrate the power of resurrection. And yet, O oh God, many of us have joined this celebration in the clutch of a lingering winter of the soul. We've struggled to breathe in the chill wind of adversity, our spirits masked with worry and fear, and a distance between us we long to close with a hug and embrace. We come to the empty tomb with an expectant hope in our hearts and the prayer of faith on our lips. We know you are about to do a new thing, O oh God. We believe that the stone we struggle to move ourselves is about to be blown out of its ruts. On the way back to our own Galilees, we look for an encounter with the risen Christ. And to that end, we worship in wonder, and we wonder in faith. Still, on this festive morning, O oh God, we come bearing prayers in our hearts for others and for ourselves. There are those for whom sickness and death linger, and the power of the resurrection has not yet dawned. And there are places in our own lives where shadows continue to darken our paths. And so we come lifting our prayers in silence. Now, O Holy One, on this day of resurrection, restore our hope and lift our spirits. By your power that emptied the tomb and brought the world new life, give us bread for the journey and strength for the way. For we offer these and all our prayers in the blessed name of the risen Christ. Amen. People of Easter, new life abounds. Christ has been raised from the dead. Through the resurrection, God offered the world the greatest gift imaginable. What can we give in return as an act of gratitude for everything God has done and is doing and will continue to do? We give whatever we can, however we can, to help our neighbors in need and sustain the ministry of this church. Old North Church offers financial support to a host of local and global ministries and missions through our Outreach Ministries Board. Your ongoing support of our annual budget enables us to reach out and help others. We trust that if you are able, you will continue your financial support through your regular gifts and offerings. And I remind you that April is the month that Old North Church supports the Marblehead Food Pantry. As you can imagine, the economic impact of the coronavirus has significantly increased the economic needs for their assistance. Instead of donating groceries this month, we're encouraging people to send a financial contribution directly to the food pantry so that the volunteers there can shop for the food they distribute. You can send them a check to Marblehead Food Pantry at 80 Atlantic Avenue, Marblehead, 01945. And if you are able to send a check, be sure to write Old North Church in the memo line. Thank you.
Good morning. I'm Maria Van Kelken, the Minister of Music at Old North Church in Marblehead. I'd like to wish all of you a happy and healthy Easter. I'd also like to thank my colleagues on the staff of Old North Church. They have been incredibly supportive, creative, and inspiring through these weeks. If you'd like to access the suggested listening that we've been putting up each week, please go below the video and click on Show More, and there will be some musical selections that complement today's liturgy. Again, happy and healthy Easter to you all. Good morning. My name is Sarah Delgado, Youth Choir Director at Old North Church and Director of the Old North Festival Youth Chorus, and I'd like to wish you Happy Easter. Hi, my name is Dara Van Ray Mortel. I'm the Youth Choir Accompanist at Old North Church. Uh, I'd like to wish you all a very, very happy Easter. Good morning. I'm Liz Smith, Director of the Old North Church Handbell Choir and Old North Festival Handbell Choir. And I'd like to wish you a happy Easter. Hi, I'm Holly Cameron, your soprano soloist and section leader for the Old North Church Choir, as well as the Old North Festival Chorus. I'm here to wish you a very happy and healthy Easter, and I miss you all very much. I can't wait for when we can all be together again. In the meantime, please stay well. Hi, I'm Stephanie Scarcella, the alto section leader and mezzo-soprano soloist for the Old North Church and Festival Chorus. And I wanted to wish each and every one of you a happy, healthy, and safe Easter, and I look forward to seeing you again very soon.
And now may our resurrecting God, who brought Jesus back from death, equip you with all you need for doing God's will. May the Holy Spirit produce in you all that is pleasing to God. To God be glory forever and ever. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Amen.